A very good afternoon, everyone. Once again, uh, thank you all for joining in for this afternoon. The topic for today's session is uh, trust and gender reconciliation demystified. It's a CPD topic. It's uh, for one hour of professionals and CPD credits. I request all of you to mute yourselves in case you've not been muted. And for any questions, please use the chat window. And please note that it's not for any substantiative CPD hours, only professional some CPD hours. And the topic that you will have to register to get the credits are trust and general reconciliation demystified. I know it's uh, one of the hot topics when it comes to reconciliations. Um, it's always like the very important part of the journey for all of us right from the day we start adding all the transaction into your account and how do we take it forward and keep ourselves compliant with law society but by completing the reconciliations on time and what are the processes that processes or steps that needs to be taken carefully in order to reconcile it in less than a few minutes I know that some people would say trust reconciliation is more difficult than general or vice versa, depending upon the volume of transactions. But trust me, both are fairly simple and easy if you are someone who is doing your data entry and few other steps that you will have to necessarily do at the right time in order to simplify your reconciliation process. So today we're gonna to see a few of those steps and also the process of reconciliation for both trust and general and make sure you're audit ready and also walk through a little bit of audit checklist. And here's a, that's the agenda basically. And uh, for anyone who's relatively not able to hear me well, I request you to dial into the phone audio with the audio coordinates that will be provided on the chat window. And if you're all able to hear me well, great. Thank you, Steph, for letting me know. Awesome, so quickly jumping into the basics of reconciliation. So when it comes to accounting systems and reconciliations, it is very important that there are few basic steps that need to be taken as part of the reconciliation process. That definitely starts off with recording the transactions, capturing the transactions on the right set of notes with the date, the respective reference numbers, the amount, the date on which the transaction actually occurred. So there are different types of um, points that you will have to touch in order to complete your transactions instead of having an incomplete transaction. You can still add a transaction with no reference number and with maybe a wrong date and maybe a wrong amount or without any recipient's name, but or I mean recipient's details, but it's very important that when it comes to reconciliation of your books, uh, it's important to definitely capture all the details in a right manner. That includes having your accounting system in place. Maybe you're using a spreadsheet software, maybe you're using a uh, general accounting software, or you're using a law firm accounting software like ULaw, which is a legal uh, practice management system. Whichever one that you're choosing, please make sure that you are working on it to your best abilities, including all the details of each and every deposits and withdrawals into the respective accounts and out of the respective accounts. That's the key point that all of us need to understand as basic on day one. So right from day one, having all your transactions entered in in a timely and orderly manner will help you later on to complete your reconciliations 
especially the trust or the general bank reconciliations. And um, that way you will be able to, um, you know, keep your books clean and also have all the calculations done. And it's not that time consuming. At the same time, it's error free if, if at all you are adding the transactions with accurate details and information possible. And it basically evolved into this part that we are today, which is legal accounting software. While those days it used to be manual data entry and then it became, you know, double entry, then it became spreadsheet software. Then people started using general accounting software, like let's say, for an example, any general accounting software like QuickBooks, et cetera. And today we are all there in a place where everyone wants to use a legal accounting software because it helps you to be compliant with law society because those documents that you need, those reconciliation documents, those ledgers, those journals, everything can be generated in no time. So that will in turn help you be audit ready. So being audit ready is not alone reconciling your books on time, but of course having all your other documents downloaded or you know prepared whatever that you're whatever is the system that you're using, making sure you have all the details readily available for you when you're being audited is what is called audit ready. Now, when it comes to reconciliation, of course, reconciliation is one of the important tasks when it comes to being auditory. So looking into that being today's major topic, uh, which is what is the reconciliation of trust? Uh, hi, sorry, we have a question already. Thank you, Steph, for taking that. Okay. So what is the reconciliation of trust and what does it take to do it? I know that most of us, would have a trust account and most of us would panic having a trust account. So um, in order to keep things simple, my suggestion as part of this presentation is to make sure that you have a procedure in which you record all your transactions and make sure that you're adding the deposits and the withdrawals as per each and every client's matter, because trust accounting is all client related accounting. So when you deposit a money, you make sure you deposit into the right client's matter. And when you withdraw the money, you withdraw from the right client's matter, whether you're withdrawing for trust transfer or you're withdrawing for any other disbursement, doesn't matter, but make sure you precisely record them. And when I say record, I, I refer to the minutest of details that is possible in that transactions, like the reference number of the transaction could be a check number, EFT number, anything. So the reference number, the date, the amount, the uh, uh, receiver or pay, pay details. And of course, last but not the least, making sure that it's getting posted under the right bank account. You might be thinking that, oh, I'm adding in this transaction from the trust account, but ending up with adding in this transaction into general account. So always try to follow your bank, follow the transaction, make sure that you're recording it under the right bank accounts, debit, credit, withdrawal or deposit, depending upon the transaction, type of the transaction, making sure that you enter all these transactions. And once you've entered all these transactions, let's say you're come to the month end, the month end is completed. So for, we are, we are in the month of May, let's say for example, so now you're doing reconciliation for 31st, 30th of April. So 30th of April is done, should be done for trust reconciliation before 25th of May. That is the deadline. So the previous month's reconciliation should be done prior to 25th of the 
subsequent month. Now, what are the steps when it comes to reconciliation of the trust account? Number one, you're going to fetch your bank statements, or at least you're going to fetch the balance as per your bank statement. Then obviously there's a process where you would reduce the outstanding checks, add in the outstanding deposits if you have not deposited anything on that date, 31st August, but let's say it was deposited the following day, which is September the 1st, or let's say you also have a bank error that was identified, so minus or plus, depending upon whether it's a negative bank error or positive bank error. When you do all of this, you end up with a balance which is matching your reconciled mixed trust balance. Now, upon doing that, the step two is where it's nothing but all your outstanding checks. Basically, you have issued those checks to someone, maybe your vendor, maybe your client for refund, anything. And those checks are nothing but they are not being deposited in the bank, hence they're called as outstanding checks. Eventually, it will get deposited, hence you will have to reduce that balance from the actual balance as per the bank statement. Add any outstanding deposits, and then you will end up, of course, plus or minus the bank error, then you'll end up with the reconciled mixed trust balance. And and very important part of the step three is to get the listing, the trust listing. Now, I, the reconciled mixed trust balance is, as per this picture, 1,715.30. And when you see on the right-hand side in the picture, this step three that's called as client trust listing. And the client's trust listing is nothing but we get to know what is the proportion for each client, what is the uh, balance rather for each client in the trust account, which totals up to 1715.30. So that's the level of accuracy in data that should be where your reconciled balance should match with your client trust listing, end of the day. That is where the trust comparison lies, your reconciled balance and your unexpended balance as per the client's trust ledger should just be the same as you see here on the right-hand side. So this activity overall consists of four parts. Number one, recording the balance as per the bank statement. Number two, recording all the outstanding checks and deposits, bank errors if any. Number three, maintaining the trust listing, client's trust listing, the balance in each client's account, which should total up to the reconciled mixed trust balance. And number four is the comparison between the both. So this is where most of your requirement for reconciliation lies. Uh, just a quick pause here to take a couple of questions. Uh, there will be a recording available for this as early as Monday, yes, in our YouTube channel. Uh, we will be sharing the link, David, with you specifically in case you're not able to find that. Thank you. And uh, if there's any other questions, do we also have video on how to time record calls and correspondence? Of course, the docketing, yes, I will come to it towards the end. We do have video on our um, YouTube channel for docketing, which is billable time docketing. Thank you. We'll have that video sent to you, viewer number 27. If you give us your details separately on the chat window to Stephanie, we'll definitely be able to give you the details. All right, so quickly moving on to reconciliation of general account. Now, um, as you all saw the reconciliation for trust and general are pretty similar when it comes to step one but and step two, of course. But there's no bank error when it comes to general account because trust account is where now the bank error concept lies. So since we were here, I just want to touch upon the bank error part. Now, many of us experience this issue with the bank error. Now, how can you fix a bank error? Uh, I'd just like to tell you about that. If you're someone who's banking with certain banks where for transferring money uh, 
from trust, they would charge 1.50 of Intrac fee. That should not ideally happen from your trust account. It should generally be from your general account, ideally be from your general account, but if it happens from your trust, you cannot help it. It's, uh, it's a bank error and it has to be fixed immediately. When I mean immediately, the same day is amazing, at least the next day, or at least the same month, worst case scenario, so otherwise you will be showing it as a bank error, carrying it forward to the next month. If at all you resolve it in the same month, then you don't have to show any bank error. So that way you'll have a clean reconciliation. So that's a point that I'd like to add about bank error. So this is why we always recommend people to keep checking their bank transactions, and if possible, also do a preview reconciliation on a weekly basis, monthly basis, um, so that you can help uh, or avoid having bank errors. All right, so the next one is reconciliation of general. Now, it's slightly a simple procedure. Now, we have closing balance as per the bank statement, reduce same way the outstanding withdrawals or payments, then you have um, any outstanding deposits has to be added. Then you have the reconciled balance as per the bank statement, uh, which is matching with your closing balances after you have reduced the outstanding withdrawals and added the outstanding deposits. Hence, this activity is slightly smaller and simpler when it compared to the trust, so it has three steps. You record the bank balance as per the statement, bank statement, record the outstanding checks as you'll be reducing any outstanding withdrawals, and then you'll be adding any outstanding deposits. And end of the day, you'll be comparing the bank and the other ledgers which is the general account ledgers with the reconciliation statements. So that way you know what is your reconciled balance and what is your closing balance as per the bank statement. Again, a very small tip for all of you to understand how you could quickly do your reconciliation for your general bank account. Uh, try to record the transactions real time. When I mean real time, Let's say you have your deposit or withdrawal happen in today, and if you record it today, the accuracy in transaction is definitely more, and you'll not be able to, uh, you won't be missing out on any details such as, let's say, the amount or maybe when the, um, you know, the client's information, it goes into the right client, right matter, right amount of client payment that comes in or any disbursement that goes out for any client or it could be any office expenses because in general account you also tend to have office expenses you have your own expenses where you will be doing drawings withdrawals and there will be also other things that will be necessarily added through the general account transaction so please make sure that everything is carefully captured and you are able to do the reconciliation on time. Now, a lot of us might think trust account reconciliation is mandatory, whereas the general account reconciliation is not mandatory. That's not really true. When you're being audited, you might be asked for both. And uh, at that time, obviously, you cannot run around doing your reconciliation. So, And also for knowing your current status of your business or health of your firm, to understand where you stand. There's so many ways in which you will be able to do your reconciliations. Your, there's so many benefits. Once you do your reconciliation, you'll be able to understand, okay, your taxes are tallied, your HST is going to be fine, your PST, GST, whatever is going to be um, accurate. So you are recorded the transactions perfectly, then you'll be able to complete all your other statutory uh, requirements at the same time. So please make sure you're all able to do the general account also. 
Uh, we have more questions coming in. Steph, I hope you've handled it all. If there's anything, kindly let me know on the chat window separately. Thank you all for keeping us engaged. Thank you. All right. Yeah, just pausing for a moment to let you all know today's topic is a one hour of CPD session. Um, the topic for today's session is trust and general reconciliation team mystified. Please register at your respective port, law society portals and get the approval. And uh, it's only professionalism CPD credits, not any substantiated CPD credits. Thank you. All right, quickly moving on to the next part of the session. How to prepare for reconciliation? So, as you know, which is what we saw in the previous page, just showing here with a sample from you, Law, you only need three pieces of information literally to do the reconciliation. In fact, you will see rest of the areas are grayed out in here. But step one is to add in the date for which you're doing the reconciliation. You might be doing it for mid of the month. You might be doing it in the first of the week. Some people like to do weekly reconciliations, biweekly reconciliations, monthly reconciliations. Totally depends on what is the type of reconciliation you're doing. And uh, the date of reconciliation is important. Knowing the balance as per your bank statement. So always refer to bank statements. So you don't have to necessarily wait for your paper statement, but you can go online. You can look at your balance and start doing the reconciliation. You'll have all your transactions to online. And then when you come to the bottom of your screen, you will see all the bunch of those transactions in there, right? Everything that you have entered in the past, in the past month, literally. You will be seeing deposits and withdrawals. You'll start clearing all the deposits and withdrawals one by one after matching with your bank statement. Now, there could be outstanding deposits that you won't clear. There could be outstanding withdrawals, again, that you won't be clearing. Those are what you see as not highlighted in blue at the bottom. But the but rest of all, gets highlighted because you are seeing them on your bank statements. You have cleared them manually. When everything is cleared, when about three steps are completed, then you will end up doing the reconciliation automatically because the reconciliation button pops up in blue. Then you will be able to complete the reconciliation and download the reconciliation statement with you in your computer. So reconciliation, honestly, is a very, very simple process. But there's a lot of work that goes behind it, which is accuracy of information and a timely manner of recording those transactions, which will lead to your simplified reconciliation process. So that's why it, the topic actually says whether it takes uh, 10 minutes or whether it takes three hours to do the reconciliation. Should it take 10 minutes or three hours? That's what we've asked. It could definitely be both. Some people will be so hands-on with their transactions, whatever deposits and withdrawals that were entered, and uh, they'll end up being able to clear those transactions in less than 10 minutes and complete their reconciliation, how much ever is the volume of their transactions. I mean, of course, it could be a little bit more or less depending upon the volume. But I'm just saying in general, if your volume of transactions fairly nominal and you're able to recognize all your transactions deposited, withdrawn, you should just be able to clear it in no time. And once that's done, you'll be able to complete the reconciliation and submit the report to Law Society. So why are we doing these reconciliations end of the day? I mean, I would like to, of course, be compliant with Law Society. That's one of the things. But 
or uh, there's more than that to it, right? It's not just always completely being compliant with your respective law society. It's also adding more to it where you understand how all the transactions have been recorded in your system, whether the reconciliation is uh, able to match with your own bank records, and hence, you know, you're able to catch all the bank transactions that you forgot to enter earlier, and now you're entering. That's why I mentioned that real-time addition of the bank statements, uh, I mean, bank transactions, is very, very important, and that would, in turn, of course, lead you to do the reconciliations in no time. And if you are reconciled month on month, what does that mean? Of course, you're up to date, compliant with the law society. You're audit ready. Let's say you're being audited today or tomorrow. You don't have to panic to reach out to your bookkeeper or you don't have to panic yourself to complete the reconciliations. If you are reconciled month to month, because nobody is going to ask you for, let's say, immediate month. We are in the May. The Law Society is probably not going to ask you for April uh, reconciliation reports because it's not due, due yet. But maybe they could ask you till March because March was due on April the 25th. So making sure that, you know, you are always audit ready is important. That's why we say that try to reconcile even weekly. It's not a, you know, big mistake doing that. So you're always audit ready. Along with that, you're also able to file your taxes on time. And it's for your own internal analytics. End of the day, you know, your accounting system is accurate and you're able to analyze your, you know, income versus your expense versus your, uh, even further down understanding what was your disbursements, if you had other income, if you had, deposited your own money into the company, which is capital, you'll be able to understand all of these in the reports that gets generated eventually. So end of the day, you have, you are satisfied, your goal has been achieved, you are compliant, and you're always audit ready, which gives you a big peace of mind. That's, that's definitely, I think we're all end of the day thriving to do that so that you know, um, there's, there's no black mark on us. We are able to complete being compliant with the law society, with your respective law society especially. So please make sure that, you know, your reconciliations um, are done on time. You're not due for anything yet, but at the same time, you're also being able to complete all your reconciliations before 25th of the month for the subsequent month or the previous month has to be done for the before subsequent month 25th so that's the key and um, you also saw why doing the reconciliation apart from being compliant with law society is helpful and end of the day what means to be audit ready is nothing but having your other ledgers and journals. Like I said, just being reconciled is only making you compliant with law society. But end of the day, if it has to be uh, considered as you are audit ready, then it has to be that way where all your ledgers, all your journals, all your other documents are completed as per the audit requirement and you're able to, uh, you know, download the reports on the go. And uh, these reports are easily downloadable if you're someone who's using EULA. If you go to account section, you'll see compliance tab and you can download these for the respective dates. And um, you can do this if you have completed trust and general reconciliation. I believe all the other reports that you can download here are absolutely accurate and they become your uh, requirement for your audit. There are two ledgers, four journals, and other documents too available.
they should take only literally a few minutes. So it's just that you have to make sure that you're on top of it. You're able to complete it at all time. So that way you're always audit ready. Now along with it, there's also a checklist. And how do you handle this checklist? Uh, so I think it all definitely starts with, you know, your retainer agreement, right? That's where everything uh, gets started. You're, you're probably um, drafting your fee structure. You're able to communicate to the client what is your uh, fee, whether you're doing a block fee or billable time or contingency fee, whatever it is, and you're able to create a section for retainers to cover all the charges uh, that occur to disbursement and cost recovery expenses. So making sure that, you know, whether in your retainer agreement, you're letting them know that every time you collect a retainer, whether that includes it being spent for disbursement or is it excluding whether there'll be a separate reimbursement for disbursement. So capturing, other than that, capturing disbursement incurred that is paid out of trust and general respectively and capturing cost recovery and appropriate taxes is very important too. And um, of course, end of the day, it's not just collecting money, it's also raising invoices. So the AR gets raised, um, as in the AR gets recorded. And once that gets recorded, you'll be able to record taxes in the respective invoices, which will in turn contribute towards your HST, DST, PST, whatever is your respective taxes. And addressing all clients' requirements, procedures for addressing the issues uh, are needed to be probably guided over there. And once you have your invoice raised, then you have invoice balancing coming into the picture. So when it comes to organizing invoices, you have access to invoice balance eventually, where you've captured balance in trust and general account. And later on, whether that invoice balance is getting paid from trust or paid into general, if there's money sitting in trust for both you know, disbursements and legal fee, Either are you moving that money from trust to the general or are you getting paid directly into the general as a client payment, ensuring that you're receiving amounts into general, which is less or equivalent to outstanding balance is also one of the most important points to note here, all of you. So if you want to be compliant with loss asset, make sure you're not being overpaid into your general account anytime. Also, make sure you don't overdraw your trust account. These are two points that you need to keep in mind when you're especially getting paid. You don't remove more than what is available in your trust for this particular client. Neither do you receive more amount into your general account because the amount that you're supposed to receive into your general account has to be only your invoiced amount or lesser than that. Now, besides that, paying disbursements from general doesn't mean that you're paying, uh, you, you're not getting paid for that. Of course, you're raising an invoice, you're tracking and recovering those disbursements, and it has to be recorded simultaneously into the program. Now, besides that, handling trust account and required procedures and documents, while maintaining client trust ledger, you also get to maintain monthly trust comparisons. You also get to record all your transactions, which is done electronically, which is where you have Form 9A app downloaded for every electronic trust transfer. So you also have the ledgers, you have the disbursement journals, you have the receipt journals, you have the trust comparison, you have the trust listing, which is also part of the reconciliation. Then you have Form 9As for every electronic trust transfer as part of trust account reconciliation. 
And when it comes to general account, you're maintaining the general ledger, you're maintaining your books of accounts, like all the expenses, office expenses, client expenses made from general account, um, all the other discounts, write-offs, and capturing general monthly reconciliation. End of the day, you end up doing the general monthly reconciliation because you've added in the client's details, the money that's come in, money that's gone out, invoice that's been raised, balance that has been paid, and your general ledger will start showing all those transactions, whether it's general ledger or trust ledger, depending upon the bank you have received it into or paid it out of. You'll be capturing all the transactions and eventually be able to complete your taxes also based on it. Just going to take a quick pause to see if there's any questions here. Nothing new. Uh, all the viewers, thank you again for joining in. Just quick thing. Yuba only provides professionalism CPD credit. We don't provide substantiative CPD credit. So just FYI for your future. I know many of you here join in often, but um, this question is always being repeated. I request you all to note this for the future. Yuba only delivers professionalism CPD credits. We don't deliver substantiative CPD hours. Thank you. So that was about how do you efficiently handle your trust and general account reconciliation right from the day one when you have retainer, you know, balance, balances, invoice balances, and handling trust and general account reconciliation. Moving on to the next one, how much time are you really spending managing all of this? You can be honest, you know, you can even put it on the chat window. Just for us all to know the reality, understand some might be depending upon their volume of transactions, but some genuinely might like to spend more time on making sure everything is accurate. So I like to just go in a jet speed, make sure, oh, you know what, I've added everything. I've spent time adding everything. So I'd rather spend lesser time reconciling everything. But end of the day, it is all double entry. It just needs you to me, uh, maintaining the records um, and understand when to touch, what to touch, what to record, other things. And sometimes the same information can be recorded several times, thereby you're exposing particular uh, you know, mistakes, and you're able to record them at the right time. That's what I mentioned about the bank error earlier. So let's say you have a bank error. Let's say you identify it in the same month and fix it in the same month. There you go. You don't have to worry about showing any bank error on your reconciliation statement. It's more clean. It's more nicer. It's a, it's, Seamless, this is what is called seamless accounting, where, you know, the process is very simple. You have matter management practitioners are used to matter management, translating matter management workflows to seamless accounting is the key today to saving time, say, preventing you from errors and making reconciliation simple in turn. And what is so easy about making reconciliation simple? And, uh, you know, you're able to end of the day record all the data when the event happens. Very simple. Like real-time data entry. That's what I call it as. And automatically maintaining the journals and ledgers. You let the software do the work for you. You let us do the work for you. And you have nothing but, you know, just simply have all the records in one place and you're able to look back at it when it's required. So this will in turn, of course, you know, reduce your time from being able to do the reconciliation. You are um, automatically being able to record uh, all the transactions and maintain the ledgers and journals and all the bank 
transactions or records are in alignment to your bank statements, which is going to make your reconciliation process much simpler. Just taking a quick pause to see correcting entries takes way longer to fix. We have a nice question here. Viewer number 27, thank you for asking this question. It's really nice to know. Correcting entries takes way longer to fix. That's very true. Uh, any chance of a video with how to correct reconciliation or even invoicing errors? Yes, we do have a few videos on how you could edit the transactions and make the changes. And at the same time, how you can undo a reconciliation to redo that part. I'll be sharing the video with you. I, I hope, Stephanie, you're able to get the details for view number 27. Please um, probably be able to share the videos with you. Um, later on so please please feel free to drop your email id with stephanie here thank you um just to quickly answer that part of the question uh that viewer number 27 had asked um it is i mean we are end of the day we're all humans i mean which where the human intervention is needed to use the software but we could we could record it, record the transactions um, wrongly sometimes. That doesn't mean that it, it is not fixable. It's absolutely fixable. All that you have to do is make sure that you take certain steps to edit the item and, you know, correctify the date or the amount or the pay details or recipient details, etc. So once that has been corrected, you can go back and undo the reconciliation and redo it. Uh, it's not that it's not doable. Um, it's absolutely doable. Um, you're number 31. Yes, we would love to share the video with you as well. Please drop in your email ID. Since it's a CPD, I'm not able to elaborate too much on it, uh, but I would love to share the videos with you. And if you drop your email ID with Stephanie, you know, you'll be also be able to get a direct call. I have a new question here. I think I should take probably the questions towards the end, but I'm, I'm just seeing if there's anything relevant um, with that. Is it possible to reconcile after the months have passed? If we haven't been doing this, can we just do it and ensure the date is recorded properly? Rachel, um, it's actually not being compliant. Yes, you're, but you can still reconcile after the months have been passed and the software will record the date as the date on which you're reconciling the book. So let's say you're reconciling it for 30th or 28th of February right now. And when you record the transaction as 28th of February, the reconciliation statement will get downloaded as of 28th of February, even if you're doing it today. So yes, it is possible to reconcile after the months have passed. Uh, and if we, even if you have not been doing this, you can simply do it and record the date as per the date on which is your month end date. Awesome. So proceeding to the next part is one of the most important points of using a legal accounting software. What is the benefit? Now, you might be using an accounting software. You might be using an accounting spreadsheet, but trust me that legal accounting software like you, though, especially, will do wonders because you are only entering the smallest of the data, but you you tend to generate those documents financial records, which is absolutely necessary for you to complete your reconciliations and also be audit ready. So finally, it's all about being compliant and you're able to, you know, account for all the transactions and you also have analytics that you can perform. You know what is the health of your firm, you know what is the uh, ease of usage, and you are also able to understand 
the science behind maintaining financial records is much much lesser and time, less time consuming if you have a legal accounting software because you are not literally sitting and doing your ledgers and journals you are only adding in the transactions into the respective clients account we at the back end do all of those ledgers and journals and trust transfer records for you so please make sure that you know you are able to probably do or follow all of these and uh, by using of course a legal accounting software like you know if you're if few of you here are i can i know that many of you here are you law users but if you are not a you law users um or if your friends require do sign up for a free trial 30 day trial and uh, you'll be shown how you could efficiently and effortlessly most importantly be compliant with law society and at the same time not take too much pressure on yourself to do all of this by your own but let the system do some work for you okay so i'd like to quickly showcase to all of you um our you law program uh since we have a few minutes maybe close to 10 minutes i know many of you have many questions i will try to address them a uh, couple of questions that was there on the chat window that i'd like to quickly you know take it over here and this live demonstration of how to do trust and general reconciliation i'll first showcase to all of you how the reconciliation is done and then i could probably show you the couple of questions that was asked about editing the transaction and undoing the reconciliation all right so this is my playground account so we are here right now obviously all of you know the basics of adding in contacts opening a matter doing your docketing and invoicing trust transfer so let's say everything is done over here and you are here you are over here doing your accounts in your accounts doing your reconciliation now when i am in here let's say the re recent retainer that you have added in here uh is 500 dollars for james park but you you understand that it was not on let's say may the 4th but it was on let's say 30th the april so you found that on the bank statement so you want to go in and change it first of all if you want to edit any transaction please make sure to go click on action administrator enable yourself to be an admin then you go back into your matters find james park okay and go to disbursements retainer tab so this is the retainer 4th of may that you want to change the date to 30th of april because that's when you got this into your bank account you found this while you were doing the reconciliation you saw that something was missing in 30th of april and you changed it from here if you now go back in here in may the 4th you'll find it for 30th of april so some transactions guys can be changed in from this particular screen which is your accounting screen itself but for some like retainers and disbursements which are client specific you need to go into the matter and do it respectively now for example this trust transfer is also matter specific you have transferred money from trust to the general for a matter but if you click on the dollar button it will allow you to edit the transaction date like for example let's say this one is not 4th of may this one is also 30th of april i can change trust transfer from this page itself whereas any other type of disbursement or retainer i'll have to go into the matter and do it respectively from the matter but not from the accounting screen over here so now in front of you i was able to change two of the transactions for 500 and 2000 dollar and put it under april the 30th james park 500 dollars retainer and this trust transfer for mk fan of 2000 dollar into 30th april as well so please remember you have to be on admin mode 
and you could do it from the account screen if not directly from the matter too depending upon the type of the transaction now if you want to undo the entire reconciliation and do it again you will have to go one step further to be another admin that's called recon admin and you have to be in the page which whether it's pool trust account for your trust account reconciliation that needs to be undone or the general account if that account reconciliation needs to be undone then you can undo the reconciliation and redo it in case you find any error so you just have to specify for which period you want to undo the reconciliation and you can redo the process again it's not difficult now the process is yes when i am adding in the transactions whether they is deposit or withdrawal i am adding in all the deposits and withdrawal relatively on the same day or at least the same week worst case scenario same day say next day is always good or worst case scenario same week because as the time passes by you might forget the reference number you might forget other minute details which are really important for you to update your reconciliation easily so now let's say all the deposits and withdrawals that you see here are in so to do the reconciliation please go into your reconciliation tab click on the respective reconciliation tab whether it's trust reconciliation or general reconciliation oh uh you are number 27 it's hard to find your cursor perhaps in the future your cursor could be a solid bright so we can accompany your movements on the page as we are explaining sure i'll definitely do that thank you so much thank you so much we are number 27 and we are number 30 um i think it's something to do with my um uh, maybe the cursor but i'll try to probably slow down a little bit to show you all the reconciliation part and tell me if this is fine okay so in order to do the reconciliation once you're finished adding all the transactions you go into the reconciliation tab on the top of the screen account screen then you choose which reconciliation are you planning to do whether it's the trust reconciliation or the general reconciliation let's say you're doing the trust reconciliation then you click on the trust reconciliation and once you click on the trust reconciliation obviously you'll first see like a you know like a demo of how it's done just have to simply click on the date enter the date step 1 remember the three steps then step 2 to enter the balance step 3 to clear all the deposits and payments step 4 you if there is any bank error please make sure to add the bank error and you will see the items are being reconciled step 5 you will automatically see the reconciliation button popping up in blue as simple as that so you will end of the day you will end up with you know the trust reconciliation being uh um, done for let's say for a specific period which is um, you know you're quoting probably 30th of april or 31st of march or 28th of feb whichever is the month you will be able to complete the reconciliation with the bank balance the date the any bank error that was identified the transactions that needs to be cleared that you are seeing on the bank statement all the deposits and the withdrawals as you see here now let's say for example i want to do the bank um, reconciliation for uh, 2023 as on 28th of february okay so let's say i go to the top over here enter the date which is 28th of february 2023 okay then all that i will be doing i'll only be getting the transactions up to 28th of february or you know 20 27th of february which is whichever is the date that you're adding in and once you're added in the date then you'll add in the balance as per the bank statement then you will be able to add in the 
clear the transactions at the bottom. If there's any balance uh, bank error that you have identified, you will be entering it in this box over here. And you will automatically see the balance as per the bank statement and reconciliation button popping up. So currently my uh, program or my account rather is having a lot of transactions. So because of that, you see the, a lot of transactions that is unreconciled basically. So because of that, you're seeing a huge loading accounts that is happening there in the background. But if you are technically doing the reconciliation on time, where on monthly basis, you should be able to see it very clearly. Oh, viewer number 27, I'm extremely sorry that you're having difficulty seeing my screen, but um, uh, I think I'm going to check that with my support team next time. So they're going to be helpful. Maybe for now, all that I'm going to do is just show you all once again how the reconciliation is being done with the preview that I have over here. I'm currently on the reconciliation tab, clicking on it, clicking on trust reconciliation. I then have the date that needs to be entered. Then balance as per bank statement as step two. Step three will be to clear all the transactions. And step four, if you have any bank error, please add it in there that month. Avoid bank errors, possibly if you can. And step five, you will see the blue color reconciliation button on the left hand side popping up readily for you. So if you are connecting your banks with EULA, additionally, you will be able to fetch your bank statements also from EULA. So as simple as that, I request all of you to also connect to your bank statements, I mean bank accounts, so you don't have to worry about going back into your bank account online to fetch the bank statements. Uh, so very similarly, the reconciliation for general account is also done. Likewise, you go into the account section, you go into the reconciliation tab on the top. You go into the general reconciliation. You will be uh, able to give the date followed by the balance as per bank statement. Of course, you're going to choose the bank, whether it's general bank or credit card. Then you enter the amount. Then you clear the deposits as per the bank statement. Then you're able to complete the reconciliation and you're able to understand what are the outstanding deposits and withdrawals and take the necessary action. Now, a lot of us tend to miss out on the outstanding deposits and withdrawals. So now outstanding withdrawals um, will ring you a bell if it's more than six months, your check is definitely not going to be valid. So you want to make sure where if there are any outstanding deposits that are, uh, I mean, sorry, withdrawals that are more than six months, you want to check if it's, you need to reissue the checks or if that needs to be maybe e-transferred or something later on. And if you find any outstanding deposits, uh, that is not being cleared. Maybe you need to talk to your bank and find out uh, if that outstanding deposit is maybe, you know, like a check is being uh, not deposited, you have missed it or something like that. So make sure that you're adding in all the transactions relatively. And uh, even if there's any outstanding for a very long time, you're able to take action for all those outstanding items and uh, uh, accordingly you'll be able to address all the requirements for your clients at the same time. So all of you will be able to arrive at your reconciliation, not only for the purpose of being compliant with law society, but end of the day, it is also being uh, it's also helping you being audit ready. It's also helping you to, you know, um, be um, careful with all the deposits, outstanding withdrawals, outstanding. You are able to take relative actions, relative measures to, you know, be um, compliant 
and also be safe and also be able to you know address to your clients requirements and uh, end of the day your firm's health is also shown in this process and you're able to complete you're able to complete the circle with relative amounts and reconciliations being done and lastly one thing i'd like to show all of you before i end the call is the compliance tab on the top right hand side almost towards right hand side but you'll see compliance in a local or where it's just yearly compliance monthly compliance both available so monthly compliance documents are nothing but the trust ledgers general ledgers there are two ledgers four journals and a few other documents like fee book expense book reconciliations you can even do reconciliation from the compliance tab and you'd also be able to find form 90s and other documents so please make sure that you're able to add in all your information at the right time in in a accurate manner in an orderly manner into the right bank accounts out of the right bank accounts and uh, most important of all uh, the date ranges are matching with your bank account so end of the day that would simplify your entire reconciliation process bringing it down to as many few minutes as possible and you'll be able to definitely rock with your trust and general reconciliation it's not that difficult a task but if you're able to follow all these points that we discussed today i think end of the day you'll be able to complete your reconciliation in no time however how much over is the volume of your transaction you should be able to kindly you know complete it in relatively reasonable time if not i don't want to give any uh, kind of estimates here because some could have volume of transactions some could have uh, complicated transactions but whatever it is um, if you are following those simple points that we discussed today right from the time date the date and the uh, you know the descriptions that is something could definitely help you identify the transaction easily when you're reconciling it and you're able to link to the uh, connect to the dots so that would enable or enhance you to do the reconciliations faster so try to find those working points and uh, if you are in need of any help you can always reach out to us new law users please reach out to us on support at the rate new law practice.com non new law users i already mentioned please reach out to us there's a free sign up for 30 day trial do sign up and let us know if you all have any questions we'll be happy to answer you over a one hour of demo session and uh, i'd like to thank all of you for joining in for today's webinar uh, probably slightly extended it by 5 minutes because there were a few questions um i hope uh, we were able to send the videos to you staff is in the process of sending all of you the videos uh for any other queries please write to our info team info at the rate superfluidsoftware.com or support at the rate ulawpractice.com thank you all for joining in and uh, i'll see you all next week I'll be stopping the recording here just to keep it short for others but I'm happy to take more questions here thank you